I, uh, I may need help. Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of sprucing up your Sega Genesis Model 2. We're going to throw some LEDs in, and we're going to pay attention to the power jack and the power switch here, because we want these LEDs to pop on as soon as you turn your console on. If you need help getting down to the board, we'll leave a little link at the top here to part one, showing you how to do that. So let's bring it in a little bit closer here, and we want to isolate some pins on the power switch and the power jack. We're just going to take some readings here. We're going to get our multimeter out. Here's what you want to do. Plug your console in so we can take some power readings. Put your multimeter on DC voltage. So we're going to check out this one pin here on the power switch and the other pin on the power jack and we should get zero or very very minimal coming through because obviously the console is not on let's switch it on and we should get somewhere around 12 volts perfect so that's showing us that when the power switch is on we got power to those two pins we're going to use those all right let's get some wires attached to those two pins we're going to throw it under the microscope that tom will love uh, they don't sponsor us but if they're interested in sponsoring us, we wouldn't turn it down. They make a great product, though, seriously, and it's really, really helpful. So let's take a closer look here, get under the microscope. First, we're going to attach the positive to the pin that is near the power switch. And then we'll go to the negative, which is attached to the pin on the power jack. And this is what it should look like when you're done. Make sure you give yourself enough slack on the wire for when you attach the LED strip. And speaking of, let's get the pads on the LED strip all tinned up. We'll throw that under the microscope as well. Take a closer look. So the RGB, we're just going to throw a little flux on these pads. And you can pick which color you want to use. Here we'll use blue, so obviously we'll tin the B pad here. And we need the power, or the positive, pad tinned as well. Throw a little extra solder on the B. And then we'll tin up the positive pad. And just you want to clean up the flux with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol here. Keep things nice and clean. And then grab your wires that you attach from the board. The negative, or the white one in this case, we're going to attach to the B pad on the LED strip or whatever color you're choosing. You can span the different pads if you'd like different colors. And the red wire coming from the power switch is going to be attached to the positive pad on the LED strip. And this is what it should look like when you're done. Now it's time for the LED placement inside of the console. What you wanna do is take the top part of the shell and position these LEDs you can use any type of pattern you want. We found that this one works really well and has really good coverage. Just peel off the back adhesive to all these LED strips and stick it down the best you can. You can also use a little hot glue in various spots to keep it held down. So here you see the pattern that we used. Felt like this is very effective. We'll use a little hot glue, like I said, to hold down for the final product. But just for testing purposes, you can close up your console. Get it plugged in, turn off the light, hit your power switch, and your LED should pop right on. As you can see, the power LED from our first video. And the blue light shining through the cartridge slot and the vents in the back. That should create a really cool look in your game room. And just bring a little bit of life to this console. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed it. We hope you tried this out. Please hit like, subscribe, and comment if you if you enjoyed this. And we will see you again for another mod on the 8-Bit Basement.